Good morning, everyone. This is Ross Tewton from Moreton Bay Regional Council. Thank you very much for joining us uh, for today's webinar. We just going to want to give a few moments for some more attendees to come through. So stand by. We'll be starting the um, the webinar shortly. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us for our Economic Development Grants webinar from the Economic Development Team at Moreton Bay Regional Council. Um, thank you for joining us this morning, and we know your time is precious for us. Um, so there, uh, we were hoping to make a start on this now. Um, other attendees will come through um, as they go along, and we are recording this session. So if there's those who have missed out, we're, we are sorting out which platform we will make this recording available from, but we are recording this um, uh, webinar as we speak. So thank Thank you very much for joining us and we hope you gained some uh, valuable information uh, about our new economic development grants to our uh, partners in the region which is um, mainly targeting the chambers of commerce and the industry groups uh, industry business groups that are in the region to assist in um, uh, developing economic uh, opportunities within your local community so we're quite excited to be uh, producing this uh, for you today So as this is a Microsoft Teams event, some certain aspects of your um, um, settings have already been automatically che uh, checked out. So um, for uh, just for your uh, information, make sure that your sound is on, um, your microphone is on mute um, and your video is off. Um, this particular team, Microsoft Teams aspect is we're using a live event, which means a number of this has already automatically happened. Um, if you have any questions um, during the session, there is a, uh, a um, we, there is a chat function and if you see the speech bubble um, which could be on the bottom of your screen as you hover your mouse or more towards the top if you're using the uh, uh, Microsoft Teams um, full application um, and so you can submit your questions that way. One of our team members will be monitoring the chat function uh, to make sure that we're um, able to answer your questions and we'll have a Q&A session at the end to answer your questions. So if you do have any questions feel free to um, um, put that in the chat function and and we will um, uh, have that uh, discuss on that during the Q&A session at the, towards the end of this webinar. So I'd like to outline today's agenda for you today. Um, we are going to have a, a conversation about what our economic development grants are um, uh, in terms of how the um, overview of the grant system works and give you an idea of what are the guidelines and the information that you need to know to understand what you can and can't apply for for an economic development grant. Um, we'll go through the processes that is required. We'll also look at the key dates and contacts that you'll um, um, have um, in regarding the applications for the first and second round um, and then also the um, um, uh, key contacts within the economic development um, division at, at Moreton Bay Regional Council to assist. Um, we'll have a Q&A session as well um, at the end and then um, uh, we'll um, also have our contact details available for um, uh, people that if you don't have a question now but you have particularly later uh, we'll be able to um, um, answer your questions um, if you uh, contact the economic development team um, at Moreton Bay Council. 
So just to introduce myself, uh, my name's Ross Tewton. I'm one of the senior project officers here at the Economic Development Team. Um, I've been on council since um, August 2019 um, and uh, part of the um, small original team um, that has um, um, been part, uh, has been with council and now um, uh, um, taking a, an opportunity to take part in the project work in our expanded remit since we've had uh, Paul Martins, our chief economic development officer, appointed in a, um, uh, at Moreton Bay Council since um, August last year. Um, I have a colleague with me who will you know, also be presenting with me as well. Carrie ann Haggy is the Head of Economic Intelligence here at the Economic Development Team. Um, she'll be joining us during certain parts of the, uh, uh, the webinar and she'll be able to introduce herself to you when she um, uh, starts there. So I thought I'd actually start by introducing to you what are the economic development grants. Um, as part of the launch of the regional economic development strategy that, that, that occurred last week and that was adopted by council very unanimously and very much receiving good positive feedback from our partners and chambers of commerce that uh, we've had um, the opportunity to, um, to join uh, with uh, launching the REDS at various functions in the last few days. Um, we're excited that as part of our vision for the next 20 years for, for our economic Economic development. We've council has um, uh, included and upgraded into their um, uh, community um, grants uh, policies and opportunities and economic development grants um, aimed in to support in the development and implementation of initiatives that will advance the Moreton Bay region economy and aligns with the strategic goals of the regional economic development strategy or as you'll probably start hearing the acronym a lot more REDS. Um, so we'll be um, so those particular grants we want to provide you the opportunity as our chambers and business um, uh, industry groups uh, within the Moreton Bay region to actually be part of uh, Team Moreton Bay. If you've heard of our hashtag Team Moreton Bay, be part of the team and be part of the growth of the economic development within our region. And we know that there will be some programs that you'd be interested in implementing within your local um, communities and uh, that would help economic development growth. So we'd like to uh, look at the opportunity of having those grants available for you so that um, um, uh, we can um, 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 uh, see if we can try and help that local development because that local development will help in other parts of development through the region as well. Um, What's going to be on offer is that we're going to provide funding up to $10,000 for any particular project. Um, the development and it has to look at the development and implementation of initiatives that advance the regional economy. Um, we want to make sure that your projects for the uh, grant funding aligns with uh, the four pillars or one of the four pillars of the, the of the REDS. So if um, if you have a chance to have a look at the REDS strategy, we've got four pillars. Um, looking at one is leadership and identity. Um, our second is industry advancement. Our third is trade and investment. Um, and our fourth is knowledge, innovation and entrepreneurship. So we're looking um, at a lot of economic activities that we'd be looking at in the future would either touch one or possibly many or all of those pillars. So we want to make sure that as part of project grant opportunities, um, the, um, the, um, the projects that you are looking at would actually have some alignment with one or all of those four pillars, but also contributing to the bigger, bolder, brighter goals that we have for our um, economic development strategy. So um, if you've been hearing that the, the in terms of bigger, bolder, brighter. So we're looking to in the next 20 years to have a, a bigger economy and going from uh, going and, and growing our economy to $40 billion economy for the Moreton Bay region. We want to be bolder by having 100,000 new jobs and we want to be brighter by being a top 10 regional innovation hub in Australia. So these are very aspirational goals that we want you to be part of our journey uh, in showcasing the economic opportunities and have growth and more, um, uh, um, um, more residents more work, uh, more um, employment opportunities, more wealth and prosperity within the Moreton Bay region. And we hope that having tailored um, projects from our partners in the Chambers of Commerce and Industry groups, lining with the REDS, uh, particularly with our pillars and our bigger, bolder, brighter, will certainly um, come and increase that opportunity. So then you can all be part of hashtag Team Moreton Bay because, at the, um, uh, because we would like to see uh, an, an opportunity for collaboration to occur. So it's not necessarily necessarily one group of people doing um, certain activities, another group of people doing other activities and they don't mix. We want to make sure that there's collaboration with that and the economic development grants is certainly one way for us to assist in that. 
So who can apply? Um, we uh, applicants uh, for these economic development grants um, must be a community organisation that meets the following criteria. Now we are um, needing to use some of our criteria within the, the general community uh, grants policy for Moreton Bay Council. So for our uh, partners within the Chambers of Commerce and Industry groups that are based within Moreton Bay, um, we will be able to demonstrate um, most, um, if not all, um, of these uh, points of criteria. But we want to make sure that we are providing these um, economic grants to um, organisations that are based in the Moreton Bay region um, and or can demonstrate that the proposed project will benefit um, residents in the region. Um, have 20 million public liability insurance if re required by council. Now that's a very generic clause and I've been speaking with our community grants team. Um, they have provided me with details that there's, there's no ha hard and fast rule in regards to the um, uh, public liability insurance, um, but we put that clause in because if we feel during the assessment process and we look at uh, pr proposed projects and how uh, we do the risk assessments and, um, the, and the opportunity opportunities that um, uh, align with the project, we feel that there is a certain amount of public liability insurance that needs to be um, um, a part of the organisation. We would include that in our evaluation and thinking. Um, so we don't necessarily need everybody to have 20 million public liability straight off the bat. Um, some projects may not require such a high public liability insurance and so therefore we would advise. Um, so we, it's put in that we put in that clause because if there is an opportunity that you are looking at and there is definitely part of the evaluation we feel that there needs to be that um, um, associated um, checks and balance, we will come in contact with you and have that sort of discussion. Um, so we encourage the, the, uh, the chambers and those of you that are wanting to make these applications to include um, details of your public liability insurance, including your certificates. Um, so that way we have an idea of where you are at as part of your our evaluation, which we'll, we'll get to in a, at a later stage of the um, of the webinar. As we continue to roll these economic development grants, we'll be do rolling these out in different rounds. So this isn't a one off. We will be doing rounds of uh, this. Um, at this stage, we're looking at two rounds for this year in 2021, and we will um, see how that works and continue to see whether more could be included um, in the future. But um, as we have different more further rounds um, and opportunities do come at different times that chambers or business groups wish to um, partake in future funding. We want to make sure that you as the chamber or the industry group have no outstanding debt with Moreton Bay Regional Council um, or have no overdue acquittals and have satisfa uh, satisfactory accounted to council previous expenditure uh, from your previous grants. So um, when you look at those, uh, probably for the first round you'd be pretty good in um, uh, covering those two bases, but in future rounds You'll probably you will need to be considerate of that should you have an outstanding project that is still going um, and still to be finalised as you complete um, the application for future rounds um, that, that will be available. So we want to try and help you to understand a definition within the community um, grants policy that the community organisations definition. Um, so that means that an entity that carries on activities for public purpose um, or another entity whose primary objective is directly um, um, directed at, make, at making a uh, not make not direct, not directly rather not making a profit. So we are looking for non profit organisations. So ineligible organisations are for profit organisations. Organizations, um, government departments and agencies, uh, political groups, unincorporated community groups are, are not um, technically um, uh, eligible to apply for these grants. However, we do understand that there are some unincorporated community groups um, around. And so if they are able to auspice with a, uh, a, a an accredited, like a, a, an incorporated community group, then we would be uh, happy to look at those opportunities. And also these uh, grants are not available for individuals. So um, um, we would, um, um, so we, we are strongly encouraging that this is a, a fund, particularly for our Chambers of Commerce and industry groups for our region, um, which uh, which would be great because we'd like to make sure that we as council are partnering with you um, in order to um, um, have the opportunity to uh, bring the regional economic prosperity to everybody's forefront and have that opportunity to um, showcase those activities that you would be looking at for your particular part of the region um, and be able to provide that assistance for that as well. 
Now, with that in mind, um, I was going to hand over to my colleague, uh, Kerry Ann Haggy, who's the um, the head of economic uh, intelligence here with the uh, uh, economic development team. Um, she's just been able to uh, reach in online. So as she starts to go through the next set of slides, I'll also ask her to introduce herself and some of her background as well. So Kerry Ann, I'd like to uh, pass it on to you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us uh, for this discussion and exciting new initiative to have economic development grants um, for chambers and industry groups is a really exciting um, uh, move forward, I think, in the Moreton Bay region. So thank you for joining us. Um, I uh, have a background in grants and in government and um, have come from uh, Sunshine Coast Council working in their economic development team with, um, with the delivery of a range of sponsorship and grants initiatives um, and have a background in gathering and uh, presenting economic intelligence that helps inform the business community and council to make decisions that lead to really potent action and, um, and effective um, implementation of programs and initiatives. So hopefully I can add some value to uh, this particular project and the objectives of Moreton Bay Regional Council. So just um, in keeping with what uh, Ross has just said about who can apply, I think the next uh, slide really demonstrates that we're really focused on the chambers and industry groups because these particular eligible initiatives are those sorts of programs that uh, are much more within your wheelhouse. They're things that chambers and industry groups are across and are in best position to deliver. So they're things like business mentoring programs, business planning, events, um, studies, particularly research studies, if there's um, a body of intel that you're looking to gather so that you can determine what's the most effective way for your organisation to move forward with your membership base or your target members. Um, building your websites, um, building regional or, or precinct based websites. So um, if somebody has an idea around a food trail or a or um, a art trail website, those are the sorts of things that could um, could be put forward as a proposal, as well as local economic activation. So um, if there are particular points during the um, the year where footfall is in decline in particular areas, um, given the peaks and troughs that happen with normal seasonal tourism. Um, that certainly would be something that we would look at favourably. And what we have is a bit of an example to kind of step people through what um, what we're talking about in terms of eligible initiatives. So I might just get Ross to click to the next slide. Thank you. Um, I just want to map out um, an example that was um, a, a grant that was given in another local government area where the local Chamber of Commerce had actually surveyed their members to find out what supports they were really looking for and would value from their Chamber of Commerce. Now, it's a really important part of this program that you're able to demonstrate exactly um, how you identified the need and what the level of need is from your membership base or your target members. And I really want to be clear about um, when we um, approve these grants, we will be looking for um, the maximum opportunity for local businesses to participate. So we would be encouraging chambers and industry groups to use this as an opportunity to connect these projects, to connect with potential members. So we would favour you not designing a program that is specifically only available to your existing membership base, but um, you know, certainly surveying the people that you're connected with at the moment is one way of gathering um, evidence of what that need is. Then um, the members themselves in this particular case study had identified that the decline in foot traffic was a real concern for them and um, that they were all receiving quite a bit of feedback that the main street was looking tired. Now, the chamber had come across a retail specialist that they knew could do both one-on-one -on -one work with the businesses in the community about how to um, how to enliven and, and uh, freshen up the appearance of their shop fronts as well as how to lay out the um, the stock within the shop so that it enhanced the retail um, customers experience but also um, just some basic 
um, workshop uh, concepts that they could deliver to a large number of businesses within the community or within that commercial precinct who would actually um, benefit from understanding uh, more detail around how collectively retail precincts can work together. So the Chamber put in for a grant um, to both deliver the workshops and um, and also offer a complimentary mentoring program to those businesses that wanted to participate. So the program included um, a number of things. The, the consultant did an initial review of the precinct and determined what he felt was the, uh, the opportunities for improvements, um, then implemented the workshops, followed through with the one-on-one -on -one mentoring, and then there was a system for customer experience feedbacks that were done post the events to see whether in fact the customer perception of the Main Street looking tired had actually improved. So that's a nice example of how it started from demonstrated need, delivery of initiatives to demonstrated impact. So we'll flick through to the next slide. So I think what's really important in here is not just to understand what's eligible, but to um, be across what's not eligible. So we really cannot be funding through this grants programs, things like, um, <coughs> excuse me, outstanding debts. If you have any, um, any uh, obligations or commitments that uh, already exist. So it's really important that the project starts. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just going to grab a glass of water. Um, project starts, start date is after the approval date for the for the funding, um, that it can't be used to meet any of your existing operational costs. So to include, include things like your annual insurance bill, it will just be um, be an ineligible cost and we won't be able to include that in um, existing salaries, rent, fuel, lease costs and all the like um, also ineligible. The um, other things such as any um, activities that you might do for commercial profit or if you're looking at trying to run for um, deliver the project with a commercial profit, then that wouldn't be considered um, eligible. What I would say though is that it is okay to actually ask for a contribution from members or participants that benefit from the project, just so that people have a bit of skin in the game and you know um, there's always that debate as to whether free initiatives actually um, deliver the, the commitment or achieve the commitment that you're looking for from participants and the non-appearance rate of people who don't actually have to put a little bit of commitment in um, is certainly something that we recognise. So we're not saying that it has to be delivered completely free of charge of the end recipients, but it can't be delivered with a profit focus. Um, and like the items listed there will make sense to you, fundraising activities or any initiatives that you've already secured council grant funding for. Um, they're all pretty straightforward. No purchases of capital equipment um, or infrastructure projects as well. So we might jump off that one. Um, so really just keeping with the case study, what you, um, could be looking at as things like I've talked about, um, consultants fees for different programming. Um, and what I really need to say is it's important that it's not just for one business, that it needs to be a, a program or initiative that delivers an opportunity and a benefit to multiple businesses within a particular area or catchment group. Now, it may be that the chamber or industry group wants to do some work on themselves. So it might be something where you're wanting to do some strategic planning work or um, those projects I'd like you to discuss with um, Ross. I'd suggest that you have um, a one-on-one -on -one chat with Ross just to talk through um, what the end outcome for your your membership and potential membership base would be through an investment in your own organisation. So they might still be eligible as long as we can demonstrate that flow on benefit to your, uh, your target groups. So other things, as I've mentioned, speakers fees and workshops, venue hires for those particular types of events. So only venue hire and catering, obviously for approved projects under, under the program. 
program, um, the marketing again of approved projects under the program. So these aren't general statements that it's not just any general marketing for your organisation. So if you were thinking of doing a membership drive, that actually doesn't deliver any benefits in terms of the, it delivers benefits for obviously for your organisation and for the broader um, community, business community around collaboration, but those benefits don't directly align to those four target areas that Ross mentioned earlier, such as leadership and identity, industry advancement, trade and investment, and knowledge innovation and entrepreneurship. So when we say um, marketing, it's specifically about the particular initiative that you'll be delivering. It's sometimes really quite difficult to um, align a, uh, a project with another government agency's strategy. So what I would suggest that you do is have that conversation with Ross if you're unsure whether the initiative falls or aligns with any one of those, he'll be really able to talk you through which um, of those deliverables in the regional economic development strategy that the that your proposed project aligns to and how you can articulate that within your application. Oh sorry, can we go back just one, Ross? One of the things that I do want to say is that while I mentioned that it is ineligible to cover um, existing costs and existing staff wages, sorry, uh, forward to the eligible costs, what is um, eligible Oops, eligible costs. Um, what is eligible uh, are project management fees. So we recognise that um, industry groups and chambers of commerce survive on the goodwill of their volunteers and that in fact taking on extra projects will require extra human resource um, demands within your organisation. So we would encourage you to incorporate within your budget costings for that. So if you need staff to work extra hours and it's those extra hours to deliver on the initiative, then put those in as project management costs for your organisation. So it can't be the business as usual activities, but this whatever project you're going or initiative you're going to be putting forward wouldn't be a business as usual activity and therefore it's quite legitimate for you to put extra costs that your organisation will incur to, um, to coordinate and deliver that um, initiative even though you'll be engaging consultants for the purpose. Thanks Ross. So we jump through to the next slide. So really, this is just tying it all up. Um, what we'd be looking at when we're, when we're assessing your applications is that you've demonstrated the need for the project, which I've mentioned, the alignment with the strategic goals, pathways and priorities of the REDS, which we're really happy to talk through and support people um, to work out that that um, mapping of how it aligns, the clearly articulation, the clear articulation of your expected outcomes. So what we need to understand is what will be the change that you expect to see as a result of this initiative? Is it that you're expecting to see an increase in footfall during low, um, low seasons? Or is it that you're expecting to see an increase in business resilience or uh, uh, increased profile on the internet or raised um, exposure to a des to a, sorry destination I shouldn't say this is not a destination marketing um, program so we won't be looking for those sorts of initiatives but but what I'm saying is that we really need to see exactly what you're hoping the end outcome will be as a result of your initiative um, the partnerships and collaborations that you're going to establish to do to deliver it and of course each initiative because this is a contestable funding um, program will be considered for their relative value for money. So we uh, could potentially be oversubscribed for this particular funding grant and one of the things that we'll consider it in determining uh, which applications can get funding. If we are oversubscribed, we will be looking at things like value for money um, as part of that decision making and um, obviously your capacity to deliver the, the project that you propose. So going back to the case study then, how the um, organisation actually put it together is in their project plan, they identified that there was a background level of need and how they actually identified it. So they really just told the story and it's a, it's a narrative that you're talking about. This is what we 
um, knew, this is how we knew it, this is how we verified it, um, then what they were actually going to do. It really is um, as simple as recording and writing down exactly how you would describe it to someone verbally. What is it that you want to do? Who do you want to do it for? Where do you want to do it? Over what time frame? How many people are going to be involved? And then what are you expecting the outcome of that is going to be? And how are you going to know whether whether that outcome was achieved or not. So I really think try to keep it in those simple basic forms and just follow that formula of telling the story as mapped out in this slide. We'd then be looking for your project budget and understanding um, any revenue that you will be generating from the project, the overall project costs, um, and also any contributions that your organisation will be making, both in kind or financial, towards the delivery of the project. So if you're going to be delivering particular events in your venue, then or your particular um, space, then that's part of your in-kind contribution. So make sure that you include those sorts of um, contributions into, into your project budget. Um, again, it's the clear alignment with the REDS. If we can't um, identify the clear alignment with the REDS, it's not an eligible project. So this is not a negotiable inclusion in your application. This is an essential because it's a mandatory requirement. And then any letters of support or collateral that you can show to demonstrate. So if, um, if it's an industry group that's partnering with a local chamber of commerce that also um, has the support of the local, of the um, state member, then certainly all of that um, those letters of support or, or confirmation that you can get that this is embraced by the broader community would be, business community would be very helpful. So I'm just going to hand back to Ross now. I hope that case example helped clarify um, what we're really looking for and the types of um, initiatives. Even though we've put a list there, what I do want to say is be as innovative as you like. We're not um, we're not looking for only um, projects and initiatives that align with those examples that were set down for you. Thanks, Ross. Thanks, Kerry ann uh, I hope you found a, a lot of that information informative. Um, we do appreciate there's this a little bit of information overload. Um, we do have a couple more slides to go before we go into the Q&A. Um, and I encourage you, if you do have any questions, to go to go onto the chat function or the question button with the question mark on your icon. Um, and uh, the, our uh, uh, Q&A session will be in a couple of slides time. We just wanted to give you some important information um, that will help round out some of the information you've received today. So you, as part of the conclusion of your um, project um, that you've got grant funding, uh, you will be required to complete an evaluation report and a funding acquittal. So some of the details on, the uh, as, uh, on this are available in the guidelines so that are available to be viewed on uh, uh, the council's website. Successful applicants will receive funding subject to terms and conditions, so you will receive a copy of those uh, when you are, uh, receive your uh, letter of successful funding. Um, and so make sure that you understand those terms and conditions as you agree. Um, unsuccessful applicants may seek feedback by uh, contacting um, the MBRC grants team, but also the economic development team is also available to assist with that as well. So uh, we want to make sure that for those that are unsuccessful, they make sure that we're able to get some sort of feedback and then we can give them some guidance on how they could look at future opportunities, particularly for different and future rounds. Um, so applications for our, our econ regional economic development grant must be made through our Smarties grant program, um, which is available on the Moreton Bay Regional Council website while the grant opportunity is open. So, um, and, and you'll see shortly with the key dates, we open at a particular date, we close at midnight on, on the closing date, and then that's it. The system is, is, is inactive and we won't be able to put any late submissions in uh, or we were unable to accept late submissions in. Um, and and then it won't get reactivated until the next round is um, it, it comes up. So um, I'll give you a detail shortly um, at the end of the Q&A of where that is located on our website, but it's definitely, um, you go to the Moreton Bay website, you'll click on the particular link which will have apply now, 
which actually looks something like this. So from our regional economic development grants page, you'll see um, a little table um, and that apply now button for round one is actually your button to click um, when you make your to make your application uh, for um, your grants. So uh, and you'll go through the Smarties um, uh, um, grant uh, system uh, to uh, upload everything online, fill in some questions, uh, provide the um, the uh, the the uh, issue, uh, the um, documents that you want to provide as well. Um, and then you go through that submission process. So we're currently through round one that we've opened now. We had them open since the 1st of February. We will be closing round one on 10 March 2021. Uh, we will go through an evaluation process from the 10th of March um, through to um, at the uh, when you will receive notifications around that mid-April um, and then we the idea is that for you to commence your project starting from the 1st of May or a little bit after that depending on how your um, uh, system will work. Um, we want to assure you that round one isn't the only one for this year so we will be doing a second round. Um, so from the 1st of July um, if you if you think that you're are unable to have something uh, ready for a grant opportunity for the first round but would like to target for the second at least uh, we have uh, provided you with the dates of round two so it will open on the 1st of July closing on the 1st of August uh, so there's there'll be a, 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 a that month period and then we'll have notifications in September for projects starting from the 1st of October 2021. So um, that concludes most of our formal proceedings for our um, webinar. We just like to take this opportunity to go through a Q&A session. Um, so if you did have any outstanding um, uh, questions that you want to um, ask now while, while we're online, um, please use the Q&A function, the speech bubble with the question mark uh, function to type it in. Um, and um, I've got two questions already. So firstly from um, Sarah at BPW Northlakes, thank you for your question. Are you able to submit multiple applications for different projects or events that you're planning? So I'll get Kerry ann to answer that question for you. Uh, look, I would encourage you to. Um, now, what might happen if we are, sorry, I would encourage you to if you have a couple of initiatives. Um, what might happen is if uh, you're, if we are oversubscribed, we might come back to you and ask you which is your highest priority. In the off chance that we're undersubscribed, you might see the opportunity to get both of them through if they meet the criteria and come up as assessed as uh, representing good value for money and delivering outcomes that align with the with the strategy. So there's nothing in the guidelines that prevent us from funding two separate or distinct initiatives. So don't, um, what I encourage you not to do is to take a project that is uh, really a $20,000 project and make it look like you're going to deliver it in two parts because you may find you only get half funded. So if there is an interdependency between the two, we won't treat them as two separate projects. But if they are clearly distinct projects, I'd encourage you to put them both in and then, um, yeah, we, we may have to come back to you and ask you to prioritise if we are oversubscribed. Thanks, Kerry Ann. I hope that's informative for you to have an understanding of what um, opportunities you can look at and how you can shape them um, for your um, chambers and um, industry groups. Um, so it, it gives you that, um, giving you that feedback is certainly great to provide you with that uh, intelligence and information to assist you. Um, Gail, thank you for your question um, in terms of your computer issues, and I wouldn't be surprised a number of you have had computer issues um, already today. Um, what I do want to assure you is that um, um, we are recording this session. Um, we will advise a platform of how you can re-view uh, this recording um, in due course. Um, in the next um, 24 hours, we'll email everybody who was invited to this meeting um, a copy of the PowerPoint presentation slides, plus a direct link to our, um, 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 a direct link to the council page on the website to give you all the guidelines and where you can actually submit your application. Um, so therefore you can can um, um, uh, make um, um, that, that sort of um, uh, uh, paperwork easy for you. So then the, for you and your office holders for the next uh, few weeks, be able to process that accordingly. Um, yes, we thank you for the people that are, have been logged on late. Um, um, we can, um, what I will be offering is, and I'll go to this next slide, 
uh, an opportunity to contact myself here at the Economic Development Division, um, economic at mortonbay.qld.gov.au. Um, as Kerry ann mentioned uh, on, on the onset, and for those who have joined late, we'd like to offer the opportunity for if you as a chamber and a question has come up just now regarding um, uh, what grants could might fit for what they're looking for um, or have a discussion of an idea, please contact me so we can make a time to do either a telephone or a Teams meeting um, to actually um, um, go through some of the questions that you may have or ideas and then we can help you provide that necessary feedback um, in order for you to make an, ex uh, a, 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 an application so that it can be part of the process. So um, don't worry that if everything hasn't been answered on this webinar, um, we appreciate that this is the first time that our um, partners with our Chambers of Commerce and our industry groups are going through this. Um, we, you may have done other grant applications, but this is the first time was possibly for Morton Bay Regional Council. Um, so if you before, if you did want to log on to Council's website, mortonbay.qld.gov.au, before I send the email, at the top of the page there's a search function. Um, you search Economic Development Grants and it should be the first, if not the second, um, page uh, to go up uh, on the uh, search and just click on that and that will go straight to the Economic Development Grants page with the details of the guidelines, uh, the information and plus uh, you saw with the previous slide I had with that apply now button so you can go through the process. Um, I'm just making sure there are no other questions. Oh, here we go. Um, did you mention how much is available in round one? So max per project is $10,000. Um, that is the maximum that is uh, funding that is available. Um, so, um, um, and, uh, and, and of course, it, uh, different rounds, you know, would have that si the same thing as well. So don't get too worried. It's not like we have $10,000 and that's it. Your grant application has the, the, the opportunity to apply for $10,000 as, as your maximum, but, um, and uh, certainly uh, um, uh, t take that application from there. If anything else you want to add in, Kerry Ann? I think if I've understood that question that what you're looking at is not maximum per project, but what is the total funding pool that we're allocating? So you're getting a sense, trying to get a sense of um, how much money in total is being allocated across the um, all approved grants for economic development. Is that correct, Sarah? So the, 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 did you mention how much is available in total round one? So maximum per project is $10,000. And so that's what we want to assure you. Um, but um, th there is uh, there is a pool of money, um, don't worry, and that will be, um, um, uh, so it'll be um, allocated accordingly. Um, and so uh, um, and so there are opportunities available. We have actually made um, 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 uh, opportunities um, um, available. So then multiple, if there are able to be multiple projects available to be uh, undertaken during uh, uh, any particular time of year, that, that we would look at make sure that there is enough funding for that. But uh, not necessarily everybody will be getting $10,000. They'll probably be get less which would mean that, that that big pool would then sort of uh, fluctuate in terms of how much is available. So um, I, I hope that answers your question there, Sarah. So Sarah, one of the things I would um, add to that also is that this is a, a new space for Moreton Bay Regional Council as well. So in terms of allocating how much funding for a total round we should have, it's a little bit of um, we need to see what the demand is and what the interest is to help inform whether we've got that mix and make up right. So there's a, a little bit of fluidity. We might have to go back to our colleagues in the community grant space and say, look, we've we've been oversubscribed and there are all of these great initiatives. So we're really at this point in time not putting a hard fast on um, exactly what the pool is because it's a subset of a bigger um, funding round. And so we are in a learning space the same as um, each of the chambers and industries. So um, I, I'm sorry that we're being evasive and it's a little bit because we really uh, are just trying to work that space out. So again, that reinforces why I would encourage you to absolutely, if you've got initiatives, put them forward. If you've got multiple initiatives, put multiple forward. So we really get a good sense of what is it that you're wanting to drive forward with and what's the value that can be delivered to the business community through uh, Council's collaboration with chambers and industry groups. 
I hope that helps. <laughs> I hope that helps too. And thank you, Sarah, for your comments for uh, letting us know that that's all um, uh, been informative for you. So thank you very much for that. Um, I have seen a couple of other questions regarding uh, people running late. Um, so I want to reassure you again that uh, we have recorded this session and we will make this re recording available um, to the um, meeting uh, invitees. We will send out an email which will have a copy of the PowerPoint pres presentation and a direct link um, to the uh, um, Economic Development Grabs webpage, which will have all the guidelines plus the um, the 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 the, uh, the button that you will um, uh, apply make your application to. Um, and then, as um, as I've uh, mentioned, if you wish to discuss any opportunities or um, uh, project initiatives that you want to get some uh, feedback on uh, or any particular questions after the webinar, please email myself, Ross Tewson, um at the uh, at the economic development team through the email economic at mortonbay.qld.gov.au. Um, multiple people see that email address and will be able to answer the questions accordingly. Uh, we're still working on and off site at various times, um, so therefore uh, um, email is usually the best. And once we logged an email from you, we will certainly get back to you and I will certainly get back to you uh, uh, to, um, uh, to, to answer your inquiries. Um, certainly, there's no more questions that have come up. If there's anything else you wish to wrap up with, Kerry Ann, before we uh, conclude. Yeah, there's probably one final thing that I would like to say in terms of Ross's offer to make contact. I'd actually like to take that one step further, further and I would encourage anyone to, that is applying, even if you have no other questions, to just have a quick call with Ross and talk through how your what you're thinking the link is to the Regional Economic Development Strategy so Ross can uh, give you some feedback and confirm that that meets that eligibility requirement requirement or give you some suggestions as to um, how you could strengthen that alignment. What I would hate to see is a great concept that um, is almost there in terms of eligibility but didn't just quite get over the line. So uh, for me I would think it's just a good insurance policy to have that quick conversation with Ross about at least that criteria even if you have no other criteria um, that you wish to discuss at all. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone for jumping on board. I know it's a it's been a short lead in time to this particular initiative. We um, tried to find that sweet balance between between making sure you've got enough time post receiving this information and completing your application. Um, we have got the information, as Ross said, um, recorded so that you can share it with your colleagues. You can revisit it um, on any points that you want to um, refresh your memory on. And we are here as well. So we are um, committed to making sure that this is a successful outcome for the chambers and industry community. So I'd encourage encourage you to tap into the supports that are there um, at any time throughout the process. So thank you again for your time. Thank you for that, Kerry ann I just want to reiterate that yes, I am available to have um, a book in a time or have a discussion. So please email me at economic at mortonbay.qld.gov.au um, to, um, uh, to flag your interest in making a time and I will respond to you in making the appropriate time for you. Um, Thank you for the opportunity. We were, we're using Microsoft Teams as uh, events as a bit of a new process, uh, which is a, a one level up from just the normal Teams meeting where you would have everybody's you know video and, and screens and see who was on here. Um, this is a little bit of a different system that we wanted to test out. So any feedback on that is available is, is very granted. So some a one a couple of questions have gone. I haven't seen video of the attendees and um, it, part of the events, uh, Microsoft Teams events is that we turn off the video and the uh, audio um, so you won't necessarily see everybody's videos so um, and the priority was the PowerPoint presentation so we'll make sure that we'll have the video available send out the PowerPoint uh, slides and a direct link to the grants website for you to make your application and get the um, the grants and feel free to email me as soon as you can to make a time but thank you for your valuable time we hope that you've uh, enjoyed getting this information uh, good luck in your um, applications and we look forward to be working with you very soon. Have a good day and we look forward to catching up at another time. Thanks everybody.